I'm always amazed by technology. <clears throat> fact, the fact that I can stand here and press a button and that moves on. And the fact that my mobile phone has in it more comp computer processing power than, uh, than the, the space rocket that went to the moon. But I don't know if you know about the story of the, uh, the space pen. <clears throat> I recently went to buy a present for my, my, uh, my uncle. I went to the jewelers and there was this space pen there. And it's a special pen that was developed by the American government to allow the astronauts to be able to write in a weightless environment. And apparently they spent millions of pounds developing this. Technology moves on though, and uh, many of you sat around the table here, the idea of grid is not new to you, and the purposes for grid or grid computing, again, are not new. And um, in, in many places you already have grid systems. But what I thought I'd do, for those of you that aren't, is just give you a brief, brief background as to why it is that grid computing is in banking and what we're doing with it. So as you know, risk management does require a good, a good amount of compute. And those of you who are in the, uh, in the vanilla market will know that you can just about get most of the compute that you require for your overnight batch for your risk measures in the morning done on a large-ish machine. However, regulatory requirements large portfolios and then exotic instruments are making the, uh, the amount of compute that we need, the amount of risk management we need, increasing it significantly to the point where actually now it's very difficult for us to get our batches done in the morning. And this has been the case since, since the 2000s. Um, I, seem to, I remember you know, small grids starting up in, uh, in sort of some institutions with 12 or 13 desktops on scavenge grids now being 20,000 compute grids on an enterprise environment running pricing overnight for and, and risking overnight for um, all business lines. There is this new requirement. There was a, some sort of problem last couple of years ago, about 18 months ago, uh, which made everybody stand up and think a little bit about what we're doing around risk management. And actually what's happened is we moved the confidence interval that we require even for VAR um, out to 99.9% .9 for the incremental risk charge and, um, and we seem to require a little bit more compute for that. In fact, some of the recent work we've been doing shows that in order to hit the new requirements, the regulatory requirements, about 10 times more compute are going to be required. I don't know if any of you around the, around the table have, have noticed this requirement or had new pressure from the business, but we've certainly seen that. I can see some nods. But the good thing is, the good news is, that where we used to run our compute on maybe one box, we're in a position now with scalable commodity hardware, which is not new, it's been around for a long time, typically known as blades. Um, we can provide scalable compute solutions, or at least we have the capability. There was a time when if you wanted a lot of compute cores, you had to buy a supercomputer. Nowadays, fortunately, you can plug together lots of computers that we understand in a distributed way using some middleware, which we call grid, that will get us to a point where we can scale the compute wider. Uh, so here, this is where we are in grid computing. We, in the early stages, and this is probably around 1998 for most of us, we saw the need for scaling our compute out. And very early on, we hit the peak of inflated expectations. And in many ways, grid was put up as the panacea. It was going to help us solve all of our problems around low utilization. It was going to help us solve, our, solve all our problems around scaling out compute. Of course, we've been through the trough of disillusionment in the last few years when we found that all we actually ended up doing was growing our compute resources in the large tier one investment banks um, to thousands and thousands of compute cores, which when we measured their utilization was about 20%. And there's a good reason for that. But now we're through the slope of enlightenment and into the plateau of productivity. And, you know, TIBCO, which formerly were data synapse, platform computing, and Microsoft HPC are, are the three contenders in the space. I mean, particularly at the moment, TIBCO and platform computing are the, are the two main um, grid systems that we see being used in investment banks. There was a time during the technology trigger where people would write their own grids because there was nothing available. In the academic world, we started building grids for shared compute ubiquitous compute, um, and many places took some of those 
uh, frameworks and technologies and try to apply them. But actually, it came to the point now where, you know, without some sort of stable, supported, managed, and maintained technology such as TIBCO, grid server, or platform computing, uh, it, it's a bit too hard. Um, it's a lot easier now, now that we're in the plateau of productivity. And actually, what, we, what we're finding from Excellion is that lots of um, tier two banks, third, you know, tier three banks, hedge funds, investment management companies are looking at grid now just to increase their compute so they can do a lot more during the same period um, and, and actually compete in new markets. Now, grid computations are typically, they have, they have two characteristics. One is that they are independent of each other. And because they're independent of each other, fully encapsulated, the data and the compute end up on the compute core uh, independently of all the others. They don't communicate with each other. That means that ultimately they're scalable. I mean, Amdahl's law, law notwithstanding, um, if you can break it up into small, independent, encapsulated pieces, you can run them in parallel. 